Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, adding a belt grinding attachment to my Tormach surface grinder. So today I'll be making a change in my Tormach surface grinder. Now Tormach sells a belt grinder attachment that allows you to grind a little more aggressively uh, than with the grinding wheels that you would normally find on a surface grinder. So as a knife maker, you know, I just live in belt grinder world. I don't use uh, grinding wheels a lot. Uh, and so I have a lot more experience with all the nuances of belts than I do with wheels. So as a result, I just feel like I can use the Tormach a little more effectively and grind a little more aggressively with belts. And additionally, changing belts is a lot easier than changing wheels. There's no dressing the wheel every time you turn the machine on, no balancing. So if you're grinding everything to within tolerances of you know half a tenth or something like that, I have no doubt that wheels are better. But for the kind of task that I typically do, much of what I do is really more about flattening than it is about super precise tolerances. So here's the belt grinder attachment from Tormach. It consists of a contact wheel with hubs that I've already attached, an attachable arm and tracking wheel, and a protective cover. This attachment uses 1 by 42 inch belts. These are much smaller than the belts typically used by knife makers belt grinders, but they're appropriate for the size and horsepower of this machine. So the first thing I'll need to do, and this is true of anything you hang off the spindle of a surface grinder, is that you need to balance it. So I'll do that now, balancing the contact wheel for the attachment. I won't go into too much detail, but basically you use this balancing fixture, rolling the wheel until it settles into a heavy spot. Then you move the adjustable weights on the hub away from the heavy side and toward the light side. Repeat this and repeat this and repeat this until you've got a balanced wheel until you've got a balanced wheel it takes a while but you get there eventually now for the real job at hand I'll begin by removing the shroud or guard around the wheel then the spindle nut, then using an adjustable spanner, I'll pop off the grinding wheel. Of course, these are all left-hand threaded to run counter to the wheel's rotation. Next, I'll use an Allen key to remove the rear portion of the wheel guard. Then it's time to pop the entire grinder assembly onto the spindle head where it's tightened down with this bolt. On goes the contact wheel which is tightened just like a normal grinding wheel with this adjustable spanner wrench. Next I'll adjust the tracking wheel using a lock knob mounted behind the wheel. As it came from the factory, the tracking wheel was slightly too close to the arm, causing the belt to rattle against the belt guard, so I used an Allen key to adjust it out a little bit. So once you get the tracking wheel distance squared away, which ideally you won't have to do at all, you'll set the tracking and tension of the arm so that the belt runs correctly without going too far in or without coming out and flying off of the grinder. Now the trick here is that tracking and tensioning are accomplished by the same wheel. There's a spring in the arm for tensioning, so in theory you just put the belt on, then spin the belt and adjust the angle of the wheel at the same time. 
tightening the wheel when the belt is running true. But I found the spring to be a little underpowered, so you needed to give it a little help kind of pushing on it when tightening the wheel in order to establish adequate tension. The downside of this system, even if the spring's powerful enough, is that every time you unlock the tracking knob, you lose tension and tracking simultaneously. In practice, this all means that adjusting the tracking takes a little bit of trial and error. And unlike high quality belt grinders, you can't adjust tracking while the machine's running. It all seems a little inconvenient if you're used to running decent belt grinders. The practical result is that whipping a sequence of belts off and on the grinder, like you would on the sort of belt grinder that's used for knife making, well, it's not all that practical. You can do it, it just takes a little while. In fairness, this is a relatively inexpensive option to the Tormach, so an elaborate tracking mechanism is probably a little too much to expect. All of that said, once you get it set, it runs great. And here it is in operation. I tested a variety of belts from 60 to 220 grit and found it remove material much quicker than I was able to do with grinding wheels and with less heat imparted to the work. I was able to achieve a pretty decent surface finish right from the get-go. There's a tiny bit of scalloping, but hopefully I can work that out as I get more time on the grinder. All in all, for the kind of work that I do, a huge upgrade to this machine. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon.